is up guys I'm back with another video so in today's video I'm gonna be talking about um, uh, how you can infect your target computer by uh, creating a payload using MSF Venom and how you can have persistence on your targets machine so before we start make sure to like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Exploited System and check out my articles on Z Security. And yeah, that was all about it. Now let's get started. So, the first thing is you need to have MSF Venom installed. So, I'm not gonna talk about how we're gonna install it, you know, it comes with Metasploit. So, most of the Linux distributions have Metasploit pre installed. So, um, I'm using I'll be using Kali Linux too all right so let's start so the first thing we need to do is actually create a payload using MSF Venom I'm gonna create a payload using MSF Venom all right so the first thing I'm gonna do is type in MSF Venom then dash P and I'm gonna specify my targets operating system which is Windows in my case and I'm gonna uh, specify the handler um, so for example uh, the session handler you can just make it meter preter every time and we can specify the way we can communicate with the target which is reverse TCP you can use reverse HTTPS it'll work the same and sometimes it might not get detected uh, but that's a whole different topic uh, like it will be less likely to be detected all right, but reverse TCP for um, smaller size. Now I'm gonna specify the L host. How can you know the the L host? The L host is your machine's IP. So how can we do that? If config, this is our machine's IP in this case. All right, I'm gonna uh, close it, and now we're gonna specify the port. On how we can communicate with your target I'm gonna specify port let's say um, um, one three three seven and I'm gonna specify dash E which is encoder so Mr. Venom actually has a new feature, uh, which is the encoder feature x86 for 64 bit platforms and Chikara is actually the best encoder uh, when it comes to obfuscating now I'm gonna Oh, sorry. Now I'm gonna specify dash i. So uh, dash i, you can. Um, so what it does actually it wraps up your code, it reencodes it. So dash i actually up, uh, like reencodes your code as much as you want. So in this case, five. So what I recommend is from one to ten maximum. You can put a thousand, but that will break the payload. So let's encrypt our payload five times. All right. Now dash if for the format we want to specify which is exe because our target is using windows now i'm gonna name it um let's say um is no nah, i'm not gonna go like you can name it something tricky for example it's svc host uh but i'm gonna name it for the sake of the video money uh money dot exe all right, now it, uh, MSF Venom will generate our payload. All right, it will generate our payload. And let's just wait for it to generate. All right, as you can see guys, we we successfully generated our payload. All right, uh, we successfully generated our payload. I'm just gonna need this. I'll show you why. All right, split horizontally. Now, uh, what you need to do is start up uh, MSF console or a listener. But I recommend using the MSF console interpreter um, uh, listener. You can use a netcat if you want. So what is a listener? A listener actually uh, handles your session. All right, but interpreter is actually better than a normal shell. It gives you more privileged access on your target. Instead of having a normal shell, what is a shell? Like normal cmd on your target you know but interpreter allows you to do a lot of stuff all right so here's our payload actually 
but be, now uh, you can use some delivery methods so how are, you, how are you gonna deliver your virus to your target or payload so in this case I'm gonna be using a known files it's a very bad thing uh, it's not smart to use it I mean it's I mean I'm just using it for the sake of the video all right so now our target is gonna go to this link all right uh, f for now let's uh, let's just uh, do the nasty stuff all right so now we're gonna sit once we're loaded meta what well, you're gonna sit our payload so oh payload is gonna be set to windows and interpreter reverse um, all right now I'm gonna set our L host L host which is 10.0.2.15 in my case set L port um, uh, set L port to 37 all right now we're gonna use uh, use um, exploit slash multi handler so uh, multi handler actually handles our session uh, oh sorry I misspelled it in here multi handler all right so what it does actually it handles our sessions so it acts like netcat all right all right show options as you can see we have our payload set our l host set our l port set so now what do we need to do is actually start the listener you can type in run or exploit but it feels better when you type in exploit you know all right so now we started our listener now we're waiting now we're gonna catch the connection that we're gonna receive on this machine so now like i said we uploaded it in here um i just uh, i have a couple uh, of problems um so I'm just gonna manually type in the URL. So this is my Windows target machine that I'm gonna be uh, showing you guys in this uh, video. All right, so let's just wait for Firefox to load up. All right, so let's just wait for it. I should have loaded Firefox before I started recording, but it's totally fine. So let's just wait for it. All right, um, the link, yeah. All right, so uh, you can have many delivery methods. Uh, for example, using your uh, the email, SMS, multiple stuff. You know, but for the sake of the video, I'm, I'm just gonna keep it simple. You know. All right, known files. All right, let's just leave that. Dot com slash forward slash. All right, now B eight. forgetting all right so now now let's go to this link all right let's run it let's see what is up all right never mind all right so it's warning us that it's a virus of course this virus gets detected there are multiple obfuscation techniques you can use i'll be linking a video by z security uh, uh by zaid himself he made a video on how to do it so i'm gonna be uh linking it down in the description it's pretty clear on the basic uh, he shows the basic methods of actually um of oh, ads of course he actually shows the basics of obfuscating payloads and making them undetectable from antivirus programs so yeah all right let me save the file and let's check what is up all right so this is our payload all right so the user is gonna uh, by the way you can uh, change the icon that's a whole different video i'm gonna be doing change the icon of the payload and make it look real for example and you can change the extension instead of .xc it shows .pdf you know you can ma make it more obfuscated all right but for the sake of the video you know let's keep it simple 
Alright, so now let's double click it. It's gonna warn us, of course. Run. Alright. Now, if we go back to our machine, close that out. We got a session. Now, what we can do is actually look. Look. Look at this. We have a shell on our target. We even took a screenshot of it. Look. Look how good is that. We took a screenshot of our target machine. We can now do anything we want. All right. But let me show you. Oh, never mind. Let me show you uh, some things to stay persistent. So the first thing I'm going to show you guys is let's open actually a process hacker. I'm going to show you something. All right. So um, let me find it. Um, all right. So in here. Uh, this payload is actually hidden under explorer.exe so what you can do in order to hide it in the future or make it more persistent you can go back to your meterpreter shell now let me close this out we don't need it all right so you can type in the command ps which shows all the running processes all right what we can do is actually it's not privilege escalation but we can leverage our um our payload to use a certain service so it can hide under that service but i'm telling you nt authority is going to be more advanced to uh bypass it and use this so look at the uh, for example firefox.exe i'm not going to use it all right let's see taskhost.exe so what are right, what we're going to do is migrate and um task host uh, migrate and the pid name Migrate. Let's see if it works. Sometimes it might not work, so you gotta try. Keep on trying. Oh, it said that migration successfully completed. So let me just make sure 1360. All right, it's called taskhost.exe. Now, if you go back in here, look, we can't find our money.exe because it's hidden under. Um, it's hidden under different services. It's hidden. So it's kind of hard for the user to notice that something is wrong. So let me find it. Let me show you. All right. It's actually hidden under this process. Uh, let me see if I can actually um, open file location. Let's see. And no, nah, never mind. All right. All right. Look, if we actually go to refresh, wait, never mind. All right, l I can't find it. It's hidden. But uh, forensics analysts or malware analysts will do it. But normal users, they're not going to notice it. I'm telling you guys, it's really hard for them to find it. All right. Um, all right. So that's how you can um, stay hidden. All right. Like I said, uh, you can change the icon, change everything. Now you're hidden. So if the user acts smart and runs his task manager, he's not going to see something suspicious because we um, we placed our our virus money.exe under the name of taskhost.exe by using the migrate option. So so that's one point to keep. Uh, hiding so now I'm gonna show you persistence now let's say uh, our target machine um, uh, our target machine restarted his system we're gonna lose this this shell all right which sucks but there are multiple ways to keep persistent I'm gonna be linking a good article too to read more about that I'm gonna be showing one of the ways and I hope it works all right so the first thing we're gonna do is back oh background sorry all right now our session is still running uh, you need uh, if you don't know these metal um, basic metal sports commands i recommend checking out try hack me they show it in a detailed way all right so now let's start now we're gonna be using an exploit called um windows of course because uh, we chose a local uh, our operating system to be called windows persistence um underscore service so we're going to be using this module to keep 
persistence. All right. So now if we actually list our sessions, we can see that we still have a shell. All right. Now, now it's pretty easy. Just use this exploit, use background and use this exploit. Now, what we're going to do is since we're using this exploit is actually um, now we're going to do a simple command because if you do actually if you do options instead of doing all the nasty stuff just press set session and our session name our session id which is one all right set session one all right now um we uh, now we have the uh, current settings keep them the same if you change it just make sure to set the l port and the l host now if you actually press on exploit I hope it works. I hope it works. Fingers crossed. And it works. So. Um, um, so if you actually list these sessions. Or if you do background. Alright we have two sessions. Alright. we It created another persistent session. Alright. So now let's try and restarting. You know. Let's try and restart. Let's see. Um, restart. Let's see the pop up we get. So if you actually go back, as you can see, we lost one session already, which is session one. But this session is gonna stay persistent. It's gonna try and reconnect once the host uh, runs it. Uh, once the host restarts his machine successfully. So in, in this case, uh, our host decided to shut down his computer and he decided to use it in a different time interval and he started his operating system right now so now we lost our session already we can control c out of that and do sessions all right this session is still up all right let's oh uh, closed sometimes uh, that's why i'm gonna be linking a good article that shows that but you get the idea um uh, an article that will help you different methods you there are multiple methods of saying persistent sometimes they won't work depending on your uh, target machine or no active sessions it's totally fine ask me later let's see if it actually catch the session all right because most of the target machines are going to be using windows 10 and this method works in Min windows 10 on windows 7 you can test out other methods you see i'm doing everything um in front of you guys so all right let's do exploit oh all right background all right uh use exploit Oh, uh, uh. oh, I'm just gonna show you something right now. All right, uh, so let's run the exploit. Let's see. As you can see, it worked. It worked perfectly, guys. The target didn't need to even press on this. All right, so it worked. So it works on Windows 7 and Windows 10. So, uh, the target didn't need to actually repress on this uh, executable. We got a session already. Look, unless oh we lost the connection. Oh, uh, we didn't lose the connection. Look, look at that, guys. We can do another screenshot. It worked. You know, it worked. Now, P.S. We can list it. So if the, even if the target restarts his computer, no worries. I got you covered, guys, by using this method that i showed you guys all right you see it's all about being smart about it uh and for the payload getting detected by anti-virus virus programs it's really a huge topic on obfuscating this so i'm gonna be linking z security's video it is made by legend which is Zaid, of course uh he shows how you can obfuscate it and make it undetectable and yeah that was all about it guys so just make sure you like and subscribe and follow me on twitter and you can uh, buy me a coffee by donating uh, five dollars or less whatever amount you want and yeah that was all about it guys 
Make sure to like and subscribe. And it's been your boy. System Exploited. And I'm out guys. Peace. Thank you.